What are some easy ways that people can make a base look more interesting? Look, I really hated basing many moons ago. Is it just going to be a dry brush over some sand and a, and, a, and a skull or a rock or something? I find basing just as fun as painting the miniature. I could not think of anything worse than working through a model from start to finish and then doing the base completely as a separate thing. This is the, my favourite part. This is what changes it completely is... Basing is something that's often overlooked when it comes to the miniature painting hobby. So in this episode, we're going to be discussing how you can improve your Warhammer bases, some easy tricks for both armies and display models. And also in this episode, we're going to be doing our listeners' comments, our hobby hacks, of course. But first, we've got our returning guest, returning fan favourite, Paul is back on the podcast. Yes, I am, obviously. Thank you. <laughs> it's great to be back. <laughs> Don't be too keen, well, boy. I, Come on. I, I feel like I can't remember the name of that guy who lives in the IT crowd. He lives in the back cupboard with the servers. <laughs> I know the guy. You <laughs> mean, I he's not allowed out, is he? I don't his name. Yeah. We do yeah. let you out, though, Paul. Like, you are well, I, I have to go to the toilet sometimes. <laughs> <don't I? laughs> but yes, I've been let out again. I'm yes. here. Yeah, it's good. Good to have you back. How's well, your hobby been? It's, yeah, it's all right. It's got a few uh, few lumps and bumps, but it's doing all right. What have you, you been working on? What have you been doing? Well... It's been a while since I've been on. Yeah. So I've been a busy boy. I have been a bit. I've been good. I've been, well, doing some stuff. So. I think you finished the, just finished the Harbinger of Decay last That's time. That's right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. My uh, piece de resistance, my little <laughs> chef's <laughs> kiss. <laughs> yeah. That was my, that was, yeah, that was my artist opus. Is that the right term? I, I don't know. I don't it was, know. Uh, it was lovely. I really enjoyed doing that. Um, since then, I've been doing some more Death Guard because. Uh, Why not? On, I think it was my first Siege birthday. When I'd been here for a year. Yeah, yeah, it was. You, I was after the, the, the Death Guard heroes and, and I you couldn't could... get them. I was almost crying. And Father Siegemus. That's not my box. new name, yeah. <laughs> he bought me a little yeah. box. So yeah. over the past year and a bit, I've been plodding away at those. So I've only got like one left now to do. You'd have to, you'd have to do a group shot or group photo when they're all done. I will do, yes. Uh, I know you get like, I've got two gurgs. Do you get a duplicate? You get one dupe. You get one you? dupe, yeah, yeah. which yeah. is Gerg, which he, he's still in the. He, I'm gonna. What I'm what I'm planning to do is okay. Like I started doing these more or less when I started to get back into painting. Yeah, yeah. So there's kind of like this. Is little, there progression through? There's the like loop. a little progression through the whole lot. Oh, so that's good. it's almost like well, Gerg, the second Gerg, the last model that I'll paint should hopefully be the best one. <laughs> so it's a, so it's a better Gerg. So it'll be a better Gerg than the first Gerg because the first Gerg I noticed. Yesterday, he's got a bit of a gap in his arm. So I, because they're these horrid push fit things. But I mean, obviously, I've learned a lot over the past year or whatever it is I've been painting again. So Gerg point, 2.0. <laughs> Call him by his right title, Gerg the Second. He sounds Gerg, like, a, like a Gerg king or something. Gerg yeah. <laughs> Gerg, 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 Gerg du. Gerg du. Uh, it should be pretty good. Hopefully, anyway. So it's quite frustrating that because on the one hand, it's great that you're improving, and it's really cool when you get. We've spoken a, a million times about getting like uh, a group of models and doing them one at a time for improvement. But equally, uh, I'm finding this with my Blood Angels because I'm painting them individually, and I don't mm. want them to look better at the end. I want them to all look exactly the same. I but know. that's never the case, is it? I keep looking back at the others and thinking, "Oh, that looks terrible. Should I repaint it?" But then I think, oh, perhaps not. No, it's my it's kind of a... No. What I might do is just sort of have them in like a little case to see. Uh, this was March, doodle, whatever year it was. This was, you know, August. Yeah. And, I, and I can see the, a little bit of progression for each one. It, it, nice. It's a moment in time captured. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't personally, yeah. I, wouldn't, I would always have that to look back on because it's good. And that's if you've got nice. progression within units, that's, that's quite nice to see as well, where you started and where you finished. Yeah, I, it's quite good because I'm not... I don't really do the gaming side of things. Yeah, so yeah. I don't have to field a unit. But actually, it doesn't really matter too much. They're Death, Death Guard. They're, Death they're, Guard. They're all, yeah, it doesn't matter, does it? No. But uh, it's, quite, it's quite nice from my own sort of perspective, my own paint perspective. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, to see that sort thing. of progression. <laughs> so yeah, I, I'm happy with those. Uh, anyway, but aside from those, I've, I had to make notes because you know, uh, I'm old. Uh, I've been practicing some sculpting. Oh, oh, wow. Really? Oh, okay. oh, 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 yeah. Uh, especially with Death Guard, because I like to put, I'm, I'm very basic at it. So, uh, you know, extra boils, the old tentacle coming out of an armpit, that sort of thing. Um, <laughs> and then when I get leftover bits, any leftover bits of green stuff I get, I make little mushrooms and, and things oh, like that. I'll stick them, I'll stick them, and rocks, as long as you don't mind rocks with like a thumbprint on it. 
<laughs> Perfect. <laughs> um, you know, textured rocks, whatever. Uh, so I've been doing that. So I've, I've been kind of practicing that a little bit more as well. Oh my over God. The, uh, sort of the past six months. I can't say I'm any better. I can't do thin sheets of stuff. Yeah, yeah. I can do a, I can do a good tentacle. <laughs> I can do a real good tentacle. I can bang a few of those out. Um, mushrooms, getting better at those. Uh, boils, brilliant. Make boils for days. Uh, and, you know, just general. I can, I can whack a piece of uh, green stuff onto a marine and then sort of sculpt. Make texture. Yeah. Like, that, yeah. Sort of like the armor is like for corroding. Yeah, yeah. do things like that, especially for yeah. Death Guard things. Because yeah. I've been doing some intestines. Oh, I'll tell you what I did do. Um, you know, for the Le- Leviathan set. Yep. Yeah. Uh, you get the apothecary in there carrying the old. Oh, yeah, the handbag. The ha- yeah, the handbag. <laughs> I, I, I turned that into a biologist. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Awesome. All right. So he's got all his, in- his intestines all hanging out over his lap. There's like a little nurgling pulling on a, some sort of tube know, from in there. <laughs> uh, and the, the handbag that he's carrying. It's got this tentacle, tentacles spilling out of it. And oh, wow. Awesome. And puffs and gooey things. In I haven't there. seen but, that. You have to show me it. That's amazing. Yeah, that's so that's up. quite cool. So I, I'll have to... Here it is. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll get you some... Yeah, you can have a look at that and see what you think. Yeah, no, that would be sick. But that was quite fun. It. That was quite fun to do. Um, and what else? Oh, as as a, the Annihilator. Oh, that's an amazing I've model. got that. Um, I always love the artwork. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Mark Gibbons artwork. I always loved that. And then when I knew I could get hold of the model, I subscribed to Warhammer Plus for a whole year yeah. to get that. Uh, and now I've got it. Yeah. So I've spent quite a long time getting me all prepared and all this. And then looking at the artwork. And because um, what I want to try and do now is I want to try and do a little bit of OSL and uh, non metallic yeah, metal. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I, I just think I could just paint brazen brass on it and do some highlights or whatever but I, I kind of think this is a this is a really nice miniature yeah and it deserves a little bit extra and perhaps it's not the best model to have a first go at non-metallic metal no I mean but I, is there such a thing though because we've said before like if it's just paint like if it really goes that wrong yeah you can I strip can just it strip it off again. Yeah, so, I mean, but I thought well I think it deserves it and actually when I look at the artwork um, and I see all the gold trim and everything it it just screams non-metallic metal to me anyway. To, rather to, than... to be fair, you, you've also got like a, uh, Aiden's uh, from Heavy Metal. He he painted the box art for it. So yeah. you've got, he, and that's full non-metallic. So you, it's actually a really good model to use as reference. Yeah, and there's a lot of, to then, a lot of trim. Yeah, there you yeah, go. Yeah, Chaos has got so, loads of trim. But he's also but... got this lots of OSL uh, sort of underneath the, you know, his weapon and yeah. sort of the inside of his legs and things. But when I look at the artwork, he seems to be standing on like... Um, I don't know, sort of metal plating and things. So, yeah. but when I see other people's uh, versions of the miniature, they seem to have him standing over a sort of lava or sort of a crack in the ground with some green ooze coming out and things like that. So, hopefully, I might I might try something else a bit more elaborate. Yeah, with the base it. to give. No, definitely. Try and do a little bit of LSL. Yeah, I, I'll see how it goes. If I can, if I can do the non-metallic metal, and then I don't want to go and ruin it with a slapdash OSL. On the underside, you'd but, be surprised how close to that trim. I'll put it on the screen for the, for the YouTube watchers. You'd be surprised how close to that uh, look of the trim you can mm. get with actual metallics by glazing washes, yeah, and uh, yeah. Like contrast paints and things like that. Yeah, but I, if you shade it down and you do it very, very carefully and slowly, you kind of get this hybrid NMM TMM situation. It's it's basically it's a good yeah. like stepping stone. Yeah, if yeah. you get what I mean. Yeah, it yeah, teaches I, you the principles, but the color kind of looks you, more correct. You kind of done that a little bit on your Dante, though, didn't you? I, I did. Yeah. yeah. I, I sort of, I, I tried to do, uh, when I painted my Dante, rather than, I, I kind of just used, his, used glazes uh, and worked it up to almost kind of a silver on the top highlights and things. You're talking about the one that I did? No, the one no, Paul's I painted. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, Paul's painted. I, 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 I done a Dante with Yeah, yeah we've all yeah. painted it. Well, everyone's yeah. done a Dante, haven't they? <laughs> um, it was one of those things where I, I hate painting gold. So I thought, I'll paint a Dante. Uh, so I, yeah, I got hold of a Dante and then spent ages glazing all these panels and all like the, you know, sort of the muscles that were sort of depicted in the armor there. It turned out all right. Yeah, you're doing good. It turned out okay. Yeah. But then I thought, well, well, I can, that's all right, I can do that. I can do non-metallic metal. Sure, I can have a go at that. (laughs) 
So I might have a crack at that. I love, I love how fearless you are. It's great. It's well, the best. It's the best way to be. Honestly, you, know, like, you don't have a go at it. How, how exactly. You're supposed to know That's you right. can or Amen. can't do it. That is exactly that attitude. So I yeah. just thought, wow, I'll have a go at it. If it, if it doesn't, if it doesn't turn out, no one has to know, do they? No, exactly. I can get in the kitchen and scrub it all off. <laughs> and then when I've done it. Probably the first time I go, yeah, first try. <laughs> <laughs> Turn number six. The mom's got no detail left. I've got no eight hair times. in that because yeah. I'm yeah. crying a lot in yeah. the corner. Paul, Paul's been but, having at it with the electric toothbrush in the sink. So yeah, yeah. I'll, be, yeah. I'll be doing that. So um, also, see, well, I've had quite a busy time. Um, <laughs> I've also become, uh, this was my um, pinnacle of my painting career. <laughs> is uh, I've recently become a, a published artist. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. Oh, you, you, you know about it. You do know about it. Oh, on, yeah. on uh, Warhammer. So, so oh, Warhammer. I, I, I was at home and it's I was so scrolling great. through my feed and I think the article went up for the crew that uh, all the new crew releases and one of the models that was on the actual post was yours, Paul. And I was like, you, I was like, you are going to be so made up with, yeah, with, with doing it. But you smashed it, dude. Like, you, well, you, I think, I th well, let's face it. I mean, you know, after two years of, Painting this and that, I, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's good to get noticed. I, I uh, everything I, because I, so, I don't really use Instagram all the time, but I, I do put some things on Instagram, um, and I always bung um, Warhammer official tag, yeah on, yeah, on everything, and they have liked some of my things. It's like, well, that was about a year ago, and then they've just, gone, oh, just for goodness sake, just like one of his things, and perhaps he'll run along. Um, but now, well. I'm on, I'm on I was, the website. I was so happy. I knew you'd be made up. So that's yeah, that was great. It's, it's fantastic. I, I even I thought, oh, it's not like a physical thing. I can't keep a copy. So I have to take a, a <laughs> screenshot of the website. <laughs> you know you can save the photo. Though, yeah. Yeah. Mate, that's what I did. Yeah, so I've screenshot that. I sent it straight to my, look, dad. <laughs> <laughs> it's like my, my brother was in the, the Tamiya magazine a number of years ago because he paints vehicles all with like the Tamiya tanks and things and they did like a big double spread page spread on him and he had an interview and things so that was you know, I was highly jealous of that but this is I was like well I'm on a website now and I've got you know I've got a screenshot so I'm, I'm quite happy with that no, Made, that was really cool that magazine was a limited print that website article will be up forever, forever. you're yeah. immortalised <laughs> <laughs> so that's so that was quite nice yeah okay. oh and also uh, I suppose hobby related was uh, war boot. Yeah. Um, I, I know we, you know, we sell things at the war boot, uh, but it's quite nice to talk to all the people that turn up because we sell loads of just bits. bits. Yeah. Everyone's talking about the hobbies and what they're currently making. Yeah. So it, that, that's, that's quite nice to just to. You've been busy boy. Get a view of I hear you're like. somewhat of a war boot celebrity these days. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I'm, I get swamped. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. like they, uh, well, I think it was one time someone said, oh, you're on, on the, the podcast, aren't you? Yeah, well, sometimes I am. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I, yeah. And also, God, I, I, it's been brilliant so far, uh, the last first part of this year I've been a fashion model too oh yeah, yeah. oh of course we, yeah. we recently oh, we got, I'll, I'll put them on screen yeah. that's a treat for the, the pinnacle of oh, my, yeah. oh, Paul, my Paul, career so everyone, far everyone approached that in a way of taking the photos like just naturally no Paul you, you stepped it up to 11 <laughs> Paul, Paul refused that to naturally natural. pose like yeah. that is natural you, yeah. you said just be yourself so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, a lot of those uh, photos stayed on the cutting room floor. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't make it yeah. to, to the website. It's but. a shame. I had quite, quite like a copy of those. I, mean, <laughs> I send them out to a few agents <laughs> to see what I can get. But that was quite fun to do, you know. Good, yeah. No, so, we, yeah. it's good. Yeah, we've been meaning to um, to update all the all the merch stuff on the website, like photos and stuff. So you've been, you've been very helpful in. in what I in, know. <laughs> just take pictures of people in the crew wearing all our merch yeah yeah it's good I thought it'd be good to have people from the office representing yeah, don't let I mean surely our pictures are going to sell all of our stock well, I don't um, know Paul I mean, well, after uh, they've seen that they know they definitely yeah, will yeah yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's just it's just how I am I just you know that's just the way it is um, but yeah what have you been doing yeah I, do you know that's what, what I've been doing, I, so. I have been doing um just the chap, the chap started the chaplain from the exemplars of siege. I started one model. Um, Is that the converted one that you showed off a couple of weeks ago? Yeah, yeah. So uh, I haven't got any photos of where I'm up to on it at the moment, but uh, we'll bang up a picture of uh, just the grey model so you can Expecting see it. Expecting a full painted army by August. 
Oh, I don't know about that. Oh, I uh, no, I am. I'm I, expecting that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't think that'll happen. No. Um, yeah. So I wanted to start with the chaplain because um, I've always loved chaplains. Cool and ones. um And yeah, and they're the, black. Yeah. Mostly. And 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 also, I'm trying to think. I, I'm trying to think how I'm going to put the, the 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 brass color on the model in a way that that. So I don't just want to do like the inside of the shoulder pad. Well, the inside of the shoulder pad is obviously going to be, going to be the emerald green. So I'm just trying to find a way to use the brass on it so that he he looks a bit more like the chapter rather yeah. than just being jet black. I want it still to be jet black, but it's yeah, yeah. yeah it's really it's it's deciding where to place the color is actually quite hard. And and I, and because I'm it's you know what, it's a lot of pressure for me because I really want to kind of like tell the story of him as a character and all the little things that I want to, that are in his background and stuff like that and then put that on the model. I, it actually, doing this is actually making me realise how hard it is to mm. come up with your own chapter. Like I, I know I said about all the backstory and stuff and all the like the colour choices and stuff in one of the previous podcast episodes but when you actually get to the nitty gritty of like bringing these models to life and telling the story of them etc it, it's it's actually quite challenging Like, and I, and it's, it's fun. fun it's fun but challenging fun. yeah I've been too used to following following a, a chapter I know, of right? for so long it's like, the upside yeah. of the box art is you haven't got to make any decisions <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> time to step down from the blood angels and yeah I know yeah I don't know about stepping down no. if, 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 the, if, if the future looks very very mm. red as to as to what's hopefully coming at some point Perhaps this year you could do a chaplain on a on a bike on, on a bike maybe the yeah bike could be the gold well, see I was thinking steamed. that I wanted I want to do the bikes emerald I think I'd love to do the mm. bikes emerald because I think that'd look the secondary cool. color thing that we yeah, talked about yeah, yeah. And have the armor still that and do the bikes emerald or maybe black with some emerald or something I don't know but um yeah I'm having a lot of thoughts about that but I do I, maybe got... uh we could <laughs> chaplain <laughs> I know, one of the Blood Angels, uh, I know we like to have Blood Angels, we talk chit chat about Blood Angels all, all the time. Uh, I, know, I don't know which character it is, but he, he's got like a chalice, a golden chalice. Cool below. Well, maybe we could make a, is, I, be, I believe it's called a cronk cup. What is what Well, is it's it? like these, I, I remember <laughs> rappers from many moons ago, and they would all ha in their music videos have these ginormous goblets. Um, and they were called cronk well, the, cups. The symbol, so we could have a chaplain with a cronk. The, sy the, sim <laughs> the symbol of the chapter is a flaming chalice. So, well, so whoa, there you go. It there could, you go. Uh, it could, uh, Brilliant. With, with your sculpting skills, you could sculpt me some fire and I could put it on top of the chalice. <laughs> Let's try. That's, that's the task. Well, we I can do a mushroom and some boils. <laughs> mushroom going out the top of the chalice. <laughs> <laughs> Tentacle. Uh, yeah. I don't know about we'll fire. We'll see. We'll figure something out. I, I, while I'm working out the colour scheme, you can be working on the uh, on the flames <laughs> of the mushroom. So yeah. No, but yeah, that's, that's all I've been doing I've been just working on that I'm taking a little, I've had a little bit of and I'm also um, uh, I'm also on the last leg now and I'm not going to show anyone or show anything off until it's finished mm -hmm. but I'm on the last leg of the Night Lord's Terminator for Simon from Custom Service so oh sweet That'd so um, yeah I've been I've, I've really been like I'm just going to paint it paint it paint it paint it not do any photos not do any work in progress photos mm. not show anything because I just want to number one get it done and, I, and also it's been quite nice because uh, it doesn't feel like I'm having to push anything or get anything done and I, uh, like to then update I don't feel like I have to update people I just want to get yeah. it done and then and enjoy the process which has been really nice That's as well nice, um, so yeah like I don't I don't post loads and loads and loads on my personal Instagram but like I, I just I felt kind of like not actually it's just ignoring that for a period of time just focusing mm. on just painting the model and I'm not trying to paint to have a photo does that make sense like yeah, yeah it's been quite nice to just literally just go yeah when it's done I'll take a photo of it and I can yeah. post that but, I, I'm but, a, I'm a, I just I tend to take a photo if I remember. Or I, I actually I've been I do take quite a lot of photos. I think that I think J, uh, George mentioned before to me that perhaps taking pictures along the process can like really help mm -hmm. with you sort of picking it because what you see in a photo isn't always what you see in front of you sometimes. Yeah, yeah. And I think for that, better or worse because it can yeah. it can help you along the process because if you if you take a photo of something you can zoom in. And you start to notice things that you might not necessarily see, especially with the way light behaves. But equally, it's really frustrating when you take a photo of something to be like, oh, isn't this great? It's finished. And then there's a load of mistakes that aren't really present in person. Yeah. It makes it look worse than it is. That's when you get a copy of like White Dwarf and then you try to zoom in on the picture and it doesn't work. I did that last <laughs> week. <laughs> No, I've, I've literally just been like, I've been still been taking photos during the process, but yeah. I've not been posting any of them um, purely because I just want to, I want to get it done. Um, and I want to try basically. Is it maybe, bad? Is that why you're not posting? No, it's it's not that at all. No, no, it's it's literally <laughs> it's I, terrible. It's it's literally just not, I've I've for some time I've felt that like um maybe I don't know if anyone else who's watching this or in the comments wants to say but like sometimes I feel that like I have to paint to then 
post something. Does that make sense? Oh and, yeah, and, totally I, and, I'm, and yeah. I'm like, I'm like, I'm painting this for me. Well, I'm painting for Simon, obviously, but like, yeah. I, I'm painting this thing, and like, I I just want to enjoy painting it and, yeah, and yeah. do the best I can on it. And like, I feel that that's kind of like this little thing hanging over me. Where it's like, well, I've posted a few pictures of it already. People, anyone who's interested in it wants to see an update, and I feel committed to then doing an update. Yeah, well, that's, that's that, because that social you know? media is and, and taking pictures and posting things is such an integral part. of about everyone's life man. That's yeah. what you, it's just it's, what yeah. you do isn't it yeah. it's really toxic behaviour because you kind of get in the habit of like if I don't post about it it's like it didn't happen no no exactly mm. yeah. but it did happen yeah. and you should be painting to enjoy it but you do end up I, I've been guilty of it like you end up feeling like oh I haven't done a post in like four days I need to do a post yeah, yeah. you sort of paint something for the sake of getting a photo out of it it's yeah. not good actually well this is the thing so what I'm thinking of doing is literally just doing what I'm doing and painting it and taking photos and document it maybe some videos and bits and bobs along the process but then maybe afterwards do like almost like a flashback and yeah, then, yeah. Like, then post like it that. then and go. Oh, like yeah. this is when I was painting the blade, and this is kind of where. So yeah, yeah. I don't know. I just, I just want to just focus on painting it, just to because it's, it's a really special piece of sign. Like I really want to just do the best I can. I think the it, last so. picture I posted on Instagram was as at the Annihilator's shoes. <laughs> <laughs> is this awesome model, and his, his two little feet come separate. They're not like part of the, the legs. So you've got these two little kind of red moccasins that just sort of sat there. I just thought uh, corn crocs. Corn crocs. I just thought, uh, that's cute, isn't it? You got so you corn, got corn crocs. You got your <laughs> crunk, crunk cup or whatever. Crunk, it is. Crunk, <laughs> like, 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 that's a tongue twister. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I've just got this little picture of on the on his base. These two these two little sort of slippers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Goes to battling. Mar marvelous. Yeah, no, it's, but no, it's been fun. So I'm gonna, I'll hopefully finish that within a week or two. So that'll, I'll, I'll, I'll undoubtedly have a photo of that at some point soon. But, um, mm. but yeah, um, so that's what I've been doing. Just actually the Night Lord Terminator uh, for Sai, and then yeah, starting to work on the Chaplin. But mm. Chaplin's been a, I've been, I've been doing more sketching on it really thinly rather than actually because I'm like, oh, what if I've done this bit, this color? And the problem is, is I don't want to overlay loads of paint on the model, and then yeah. So yeah, is there been, not an app for that? Yeah, but I'm, I'm about as, as, as he's old school. I'm, I'm, he's I'm old as school. analog as an abacus, <laughs> like you know, like you know. So like, um, I was gonna yeah. say there must be like a way to do it in Photoshop, where you can just take a picture. I'm sure there is. Yeah, yeah. That's well above my technological yeah. pay grade. So, so yeah. Like um, so yeah. But yeah, no, leave that to us, Gen Z. Yeah, there you go. There you <laughs> yeah. go. So yeah, I'll stick with the abacus. Yeah, well, there you go. So, I'm old. I even I can do that sort of thing. Yeah. But um, but no, yeah. So that's uh, that's kind of what I've been up to. Mm, so okay. well, speaking of projects that are nearly finished, my Blood Angels. This close. Working Hold on it on. last night. Last uh, shoulder pad. It's, well, <laughs> you're not far off. It's uh, I've got the, the arms separate uh, with the bolter so I can get behind and paint the back of it. I've got those in a sub-assembly, but the bodies are done. Yep. There's two models left. The arms are mostly done. So I'm hoping that so how, week how many or so. How points worth is this? Oh, dozen. A dozen points. <laughs> 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 okay. I was expecting like a thousand, at least a thousand points or something. But no, uh, no, no, no. I'll be lucky if it's like one twenty. I think at the end of this. But, oh, uh, okay. I've got some models waiting in the wings. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm, I'm now. I'm seeing the end of the stone guard. I'm excited to start the next unit. Gotcha. So my motivation has gone nowhere. I'm very, very happy with the results. Yeah. Um, hoping to get further along, but I might have a little procrastination project coming up in June because. It's a uh, hashtag June Steeler Colts, which is our monthly yes. challenge. Ooh, and I, like I might have cherry picked some of the new Kill Team models. Yeah, they are quite paint. nice. I have, yeah, yeah. I, I quite, I've always quite liked Gene Steeler Colt. I've never painted any, but I, 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 I quite like the look of the. Um, is it the? I think we've got uh, the Benefactus. Yes, with a massive brain. Yeah. Yeah, I quite like that model. He's quite, is, oh, the, the Mega Mind fellow. Yeah, yeah. The Mega Mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the uh, the abominant, yes, uh, with the, like, the weird eyes and the squish faces and the, yeah, I like. So I, I've been we, we've been talking about June June Steeler, um, and I've got. I said I want to do a Kellermorph, which is like my favourite mm. Gene Steeler cult model, but I kind of want to save that for a comp piece. I don't want to kind of rush it in. This like, Kellermorph is never going to happen. <laughs> it is going to happen. Oh my God. It is like, going to happen. I'm finally going to do it. Finally going to do it for June Steeler Colts. Oh, actually, I'm not. No, but so I've actually chosen a different model to get done this month that okay. I am going to commit to and I'm going to do. And Is that is, for time's sake? Because that's a strategic choice. Yeah, it choice. is. It is yeah. a strategic choice because <laughs> cause the thing is, this one's got a lot more flesh on it rather than like leather and armor mm -hmm. and all those kind of things. Um, and uh, it also has a little sidekick as well. So that's right, it yeah. is the, uh, the abominant. The, yeah. I think it's the abominant that's got the little guy next to him. That's true. And he's got massive hammer mm. three arms and then he's got like this tiny little guy that's kind of leaning around going go and get him like you know so <laughs> so um so like i i yeah so I've, i'm gonna do that because one 
I really enjoyed painting the crew uh, flesh shaper, and that's that mm. we we done um, for, model that also uh, took far too long to finish. Yeah, it did. That was because of the base, but we'll talk about that today. Um, uh, and um, and and this one's just quite cool because it's lots of lots of flesh, um, and and just something a bit different for that I normally would paint. And I'm gonna I'm gonna commit to doing no red on it. I'm saying that now. There's gonna be zero red on that model at all whatsoever. I don't believe you. So it's, gonna, it's not going to happen. It's, 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 it's yeah. going to be some in there. will be no red on it. Yeah, absolutely no red at all whatsoever. It's a very specific. I always end up putting red Other on the model made. somewhere and I'm, and I'm just going to commit to not doing it. So mm. like, I'm going to try and paint it. In no a, red. No red at all. No red at all. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, so Back, bring all your red paints into work so we can. Lock oh, we them won't up. fit them in the office. You won't get them it's a storage in the, issue. Uh, you won't get them in the office. Yeah, that's the problem. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, yeah. So that's going to mm. be the model that I do for it. But you're doing the Primus, aren't you? I am doing the Primus, and I'm doing four Brood Brothers. Yeah, they're uh, cool. Which looks yeah. sick. So. Primus is probably one. I, I, I love the Primus model. He it's looks, such a he like. It's so. Not- he just looks so so like badass. Like he's literally like does not care. I'm yeah. not super like, familiar with the range, but I think he's more of a kind of side character. He's not like kind a main, of yeah. He's not a main yeah. character. He comes no, out of set. He's the Morty to someone else's Rick. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. definitely. Yeah. yeah, the Mega Mind could be the yeah. Rick. If kind of that would work almost quite, yeah that would work quite well actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's pretty good. Yeah. yeah, but that yeah, I'll be saying be cool to see what you do with that because that's, a, that's a, a mega model. Like, uh, I, I literally when George said to me he was doing it, I was like, oh, crap! I was hoping I was going to do <laughs> <laughs> I only do that one. A, it's such a cool I model. Like, it's so but they, as far as I could tell, there wasn't with the I say the, the new Gene Stealer range, uh, Gene Stealer Colt range. I didn't wasn't many new models, is there? There's, I think there's, but that's, that's, that's because they've got every character in existence. Like you, they've already got like so many. They're very so character many, dense. They, they've got so many character yeah, models. Yeah, I'm thinking more like the. Uh, the rank and file types. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I mean, they've got you've got the what you've got the neophytes, uh, neophytes the acolytes, yeah. the acolytes yeah. you've got the, the brood brothers, just gene stealers as well, stealers right? As well. Gene, I suppose you get yeah, you could you, yeah, yeah you got the new gene stealers. Yeah, you've got quite yeah, a bit. Not too bad. I like the little buggies and the and the little the quad little, bike. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're cool. The sniper well. on the mm. on the on the quad bike is amazing. It's oh, one of my favorite models. Great yeah, to see how he can shot while roaring across the battlefield. Yeah, it's a great model. So. If you're a long-term listener of the podcast, you'll know how important it is to have the right tools to aid you in your painting. And if there's one piece of equipment that I could never live without, it's my Onyx lamp from Native Lighting. It doesn't matter what brush or paints you have if you can't see what you're doing in the first place. The Onyx is the perfect lamp for miniature painting because it's super bright, 2200 lumen LEDs cast soft and diffused light on your models without any harsh shadows. And its daylight balanced color temperature of 6500K gives you the confidence that the colors you are painting are accurate. As someone with a very small hobby desk, by far my favorite feature though is its articulating arm, which clamps to the side of your desk, maximizing your workspace. It's also super adjustable so you can sit comfortably in the perfect painting position without sacrifice. It also folds up into a compact shape, which is great if you like to travel to paint with your friends. To upgrade your setup and order yours now, head to siegestudios.co.uk forward slash shop or head to the link in this episode's description. Uh, let's do the listeners' comments. We'll do it a bit quicker this week. Uh, so there was a theme with this uh, with the comments on last episode, uh, very feline-related. Uh, I dropped a hobby hack of using, well, I was, I, it was actually one that was sent by a listener, but it was uh, using a cat whisker to make scratches on a tank. And I thought that that was quite novel. Turns out uh, people use cat whiskers for all sorts of things. This is not a new concept. Uh, it was very new for me. I'm just going to yeah, say it's very new. For me well. I thought it was a bit of a wild take, but obviously not. So, uh, Ulfram says, uh, I actually have a cat whisker that my kitty shared on my keyboard that I use for sculpting. Uh, it works great for giving fur sculpting texture uh, in epoxy putty. Oh. So, yeah, using yeah. actual fur to sculpt it's like a, fur. Well, I yeah. guess because they're quite firm. So it's kind of like a soft needle, sort of more of almost like a I flexible suppose. needle, really, isn't it? Real life yeah. reference. There you go. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, Unfold says, I use cat whiskers for scratches and dotting eyes. I have found the Ooh, fine end cool. better for scratches and the end that would have been in the cat's face for eyes. That's quite cool. That's quite a nice I, idea. I, I, Where can I buy some cat's whiskers? <laughs> I, 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 Before I, George buys them all up. Like I know I come out with crazy hobby acts sometimes, I know, but this right? is just on another level. Oh, there's another one. I'll tell you what you want to do. You want to put, you want to put a cat's whisker in a, some sort of drill <laughs> and use it to <laughs> power tool. just go mental with it yeah the DeWalt whisker yeah <laughs> uh, Charlie Kirkpatrick says fun fact you can also make nice curved uh, strings of thin blood using cat whiskers as a base uh, David Neal told me that's how he achieved the effect on one of his golden demon winners oh okay so I guess the idea is that you get uh, 
the fur is like the base and then when you paint on it it's, yeah they're so fine i've seen, sort of seen people it. do it with like the old uhu yeah. 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 pronunciation in the comments yeah yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. so yeah i suppose that, i mean it might be quite tricky to stick those in place though a whisker i have no idea no yeah. just, just a bit of my boss. yeah i need some cat's whiskers uh adam's got a cat hasn't he yeah i've got a cat i've got two cats him. mind you you can't just go they shed, catch they shed. So I found the. I didn't yeah. know this. I didn't know they shed their whiskers. Don't they? Have, the whiskers. They need them so they know how to fit through. Yeah, they. Sort of they shed, if you have cats, you'll know that along with hair, they this. also shed whiskers and claws. So around your house, you'll find whiskers all over the gaff. Hmm. No, yeah. I didn't know that. Did, well, yeah. Okay, we're just going to harvest cats' whiskers. <laughs> <laughs> well, please don't do that. <laughs> uh, and finally, uh, Clegatron says, "I'm hoping for a come from behind victory for James uh, by getting to a thousand points of Mordians by just painting a pair of Bane blades." <laughs> <laughs> that won't happen. That was the reason why I yeah. got those two Bane blades. Yeah. So, uh, so but, yeah. I mean, I mean, they exist in your collection. How many Bane blades do you have? I have got a Lucius Forge World pattern and a Mars Forge World pattern Bane blade. Okay, so of, of your 30 or 40 tanks, there's only two Bane blades. Yeah. It's a bit weak, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So you expect more, wouldn't you? It's fine. There's <laughs> <laughs> no more room left in the house. I don't want more this. tanks. No. We are done. No more tanks. You could probably like a, no, you could probably no kit more. bash a full size tank at this point. From the tank, yeah. From yeah. all yeah. the tanks, yeah. 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 You got like a Megazord of tanks. They just yeah. come together <laughs> like a Decepticon. <laughs> <laughs> okay our main topic this week as you've guessed from the title is of course all about basing we're going to be talking faster ways to base your models way to make your bases look better effective color choices uh, materials tools things we like to use and all of that good stuff um the conception of this topic uh came from suggestions from the listeners actually both in discord and on youtube uh so big ups whiskey dingo and walker 99 sn1 gi uh, who have both suggested that we do this as a topic. Uh, I think the first place I would like to start with this as a conversation is, and I'm interested to get your take on this, Paul. Mm. Me and James That's what I'm here for. <laughs> <laughs> Me and James have debated over the years whether it is faster to base your models uh, at the start of a project, at the end of a project, or separately. Mm. I, I, it depends. It, it really, for me, I, look, I really hated basing many moons ago. So I would just stick the model on the base. Once I'd finished painting the model, PVA in some sand, whack a skull on it for, you know, <laughs> for being tropical or whatever. I just whack a skull on it. That's exotic. Job done. But now uh, I'm actually thinking a bit more. It's, it's difficult because it depends what you want to do with your model. So, um, Sometimes it's easy to paint your model not on the base. So, um, you know, you might have it as a separate part, but you'll paint the model, but you'll still need to finish the base afterwards because you need to obviously build the base around it. Um, but now I'm sort of, instead of just whacking PVA on the flat base and then sprinkling some sand on it and bunging a wash on and a dry brush, I've discovered cork bark sheets do you know they make these things mm -hmm. you know you can get those <laughs> it's just a really thin sheet of cork bark right and it's a, and it's amazing this stuff you mean, you, like, you mean like the raw bark not the flat stuff right well it's just a i don't know it's just it's like a dinner mat or a, oh, okay the flat, right, the flat, you know, flat it's flat real stuff flat, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah you can buy this stuff it's amazing right uh, it's on the level with your cat whiskers you, get, <laughs> you can buy this in a pack right you buy i've got three sheets right? it's gonna last me forever this pack and you just, you break some off and it's like, a, well, it's just like a sheet of rock. It's amazing. You can break the edge. It's great stuff. So, and you can stack these one on top of the other to make like a little rocky outcropping. Mm -hmm. So you can, you know, build these things on. So what I guess what I'm trying to say is I don't really know. Uh, <laughs> first or last. It just, I, it really depends what you want to do with your, your particular little model and things like that and how you're going to build it. Like with my, uh, as as rack, um, I've got I've kind of got him on some of this cork genius cork bark bark stuff. He's a you know a few levels up, but there's a, 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 you sort of stick it on. You can even sort of chip into it and sculpt it a little bit. So there's kind of a groove in the middle, but you know, so I can get some OSL up there. Don't forget your mushrooms and some got to have some mushrooms growing <laughs> out. Yeah. Um, 
so with this particular model, I think the basin will still be done last after I've finished the main character. I always do, I always do the, I don't, I don't think I've ever done the basing, I painted it along with the model. It's always done, but that's the, always the last thing I'll ever do, I think. It's really interesting that, that uh, the different processes that people have for it. So I'm, I'm completely at the other end of the, of, the, of, the, yeah. of the field. Like for me, I cannot stand doing them separate because the thing is, Personally, for me, the base is just as important as the miniature. I've always said, yeah. It's like it's, oh, yeah. It, it's, uh, I'm not saying you're. you're not I saying agree that, now, but, but like, <laughs> it's it. I always see it as the frame to the canvas, or like, uh, or, or it's it, it's the environment that that model or army mm. is is set within, and and like, I think it's really important to take that into consideration as well as the miniature. So, because of that, and because I, like the way I like working stuff is as efficiently without sacrificing quality. Like I like to not dilute my attention that much. And, and I, I literally could not think personally, this is purely opinionated. Like I could not think of anything worse than working through a model from start to finish and then doing the base completely as a separate thing mm. because they're, then those two th objects are separate from each other. And yeah. it's then like, it's then marrying two things together without seeing how they work together. Yeah. Do you think that's sense? because you personally struggle to visualize it as um, such? Because for example, not to jump in with my take on this yet, but as someone who likes to do them separately, I don't see them separately in my head, if that makes sense. So I'm still imagining the model on it. I, I get I'm what you're saying, like, yeah. I'm not going, oh, I'm going to paint this, and I'm going to paint this, and then I just slack them, do, smack do them together. Do you know what it is? Yeah. I think it's because I've, for my army, I my process is I'll get the models, I'll build and clean the models. The, the, but the first thing I do before I even touch cutting stuff off sprues is all the all the plastic bases that are in the in the pack. I'll take all the plastic bases out, sharp knife, scour them so they've got like loads of like uh, shallow cut lines in them, so that the not only the model will stick better to the base and yeah. scour the underneath of the feet, but you stick the models on, and then when you put the PVA on, the first neat layer of PVA that your sand or basin material or whatever sticks to, then it, it, it sticks to it a lot firmer, if that makes sense. And then it's got, something to it's, cling it's to, got it? like foundations, yeah. if that makes sense. <laughs> it's like, tip. That, because I've always done it that way from when I first painted armies, even my comp stuff, I will do that as well mm. because then when it comes to the painting, so when I'm undercoating the models, uh, I'll, I'll obviously put the basin material on. And then what, what I'll just segue in, onto that and say is that like, I think that the amount of time you spend being super neat with PVA around the feet hmm. is less time, but it's also making your brush hand practice muscle memory and control of the, of the brush while you're doing that. I think that's less time than doing all the bases separate and then the time that you're going to spend drilling and pinning the models into the bases. And the yeah. other thing is that when you're undercoating the models, you're not just undercoating the model, you're putting a, a sealing layer over the top of the basin material. And then when you put your base color on with an airbrush or rattle can or whatever, you're then sealing the basin material again. Mm. So you're doing, you're doing that stage at the same time as the miniature. So you're actually closer to the end point rather than painting the full model, going back to the beginning with a base and doing that whole thing as a process. And then you've got to add the models on yeah. at the end. Like I, I just, for efficiency in my mind, I like working it in my opinion, at the same time. Because then I could, then if I've got a colour, I'm painting the model and I sketch it onto the armour or sketch it on somewhere or put something somewhere. There's been occasions where I, I've started an army project and all the models are undercoated or primed with the, with the main colour that the project is, is going to be painted. Say, like for example, the uh, when we done the um, uh, the Hawk Lords, the basing colour for that, I think it changed twice during mm. the process because I was like, I sketched a bit on while I, I had the, they were all purple and I literally got some paint I had on the palette, a color that I was potentially thinking mm. of using for the basin. And when I sketched it on, I went, oh, actually that, that doesn't, that doesn't work as well as I thought it was going to. I'll just change it. Imagine if I'd gone through the basing process and used that first color that I initially thought of and then went, oh, actually they don't work. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So the, I don't think there's a right or wrong way of doing it. For me, in my opinion, I think, I think what I do and the way I do it works really well for me. And it allows me the, the the opportunity to change stuff as I'm going through. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I've tested this over several army projects that I've done for commissions. Because when I first started painting, uh, this was a few years ago now, uh, when I first started doing the commissions, James told me about his method of doing things. And I, for me personally, found it really, really slow. Um, something about not having access to the underside of the models with a base in the way bothered me. And also something about having like 
75 or 100 models in front of me and I've got to sit here with a massive brush and just sit there and paint a load of sand. That wound me up. So what I've started doing, and I've done this as a test, and it worked out more efficient for me if it, if whatever works for you, obviously. 100%. But what I've started doing now is uh, when I build all of the models, they get a tiny dot of super glue on their foot to stick them to the base. Mm. And that's so that while I'm painting them, I can hold them on a, a model holder or a shot glass, whatever you want to use. But if it gets to a point in the process where there's something I can't access, I can very, very easily snap the model off. Once all the models are completely painted, I'll then do the basing and I do it in a huge batch process. So I've got a big sheet of a uh, plastic card, like a, a three and I'll blue tack all, like, nice. all the bases, like 60, 70 bases on there. And with a massive brush, I'm base cutting all the PVA on all of them, basing material on all of them, yeah. rattle can all of them. Then uh, ideally with a whatever basing color uh, it's going to be, I'll use a rattle can for that instead of an airbrush, because it's much, much quicker. You can get coverage really, really fast. And also, because the um, because the rattle can like kind of soaks in to the uh, the basing material, it makes it a lot harder as well. Yeah. Um, so it's quite, it's very, very important to prime the sand but after. That, that's, exactly, yeah. that's exactly the same reason why I prefer it on at the beginning. Yeah, yeah, that makes because sense. Because mm. you're going to, you're, you're putting a, an undercoat layer on the basing material as well as it's like a stuff. hardener yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, do, I always do two, two layers of PVA 50% like 100 like percent strength on the scoured bases so that it firmly sits, like yeah. sticks down the, the basing material and then once I, I use my airing cupboard a lot they'll go in the airing cupboard like just grey model like plastic model on the base with the basing material the airing cupboard will just because the slightly warmer temperature will evaporate obviously any like moisture that's on in the basing material then I'll do a 50 50 um, PVA and water. A lot, sometimes I've seen people put neat PVA over again. The problem with that is PVA is like plastic, and when it dries, it constricts and then it rips. Yeah, you get the edges curl up. Yeah, yeah the edges curl up. So if you scour it, put the foundation line things in, 50, full strength PVA, sand on, let it dry, airing cupboard, whatever, sunny shelf in the sun or whatever in the summer's day, and then, and then just do a 50 50 diluted mix. That diluted mix dries it like concrete, but it doesn't have the elasticity it to pull it rip up. it up. Yeah. Um, so then the next step on that is, and the reason that this is my, this is the, my favorite part. This is what changes it completely is now you've got this massive sheet of bases ready to go. Biggest makeup brush you can find mm. and you can just all of them, all of them so mm. fast. Mm. And I can get three like uh, highlight stages of dry brushing done on like a hundred bases in like 10 minutes. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's so fast. Yeah. yeah. Once that's done, this is a, uh, this is going to be down to the model. So obviously a bit of a pet peeve of mine. One, it depends on the, I guess the coarseness of the material you're using and the model itself. Yeah. But like you'll often see like, once you stick a, for example, a space Marine mm. on a base, they're like levitating. They mm. never quite look right. They don't look like they're submerged in it. So as a final step, if it's necessary and only if it's necessary, because some models have very, very small feet, they fit in just fine. It's not an issue. Mm. If it's very, very necessary, I'll then go in with um, just some Citadel uh, basing, uh, the texture paste and stuff. Uh, yeah. mm. And with a brush, just around any little gaps on the feet, just dot some of that in there. Yeah. And if you're tactical and you do your basing material the same color as that texture paint, you don't need to touch it up afterwards. Mm, yeah. You might have to do a tiny little dry brush, but it's very, very, very quick. Yeah. And while, yes, there is a little bit of back and forth and it's not like a perfect system, I found that in my tests of doing I think it was four or five armies. I've tried both ways. I found that overall, that was, I want to say about half as fast overall. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's the thing. Like, I mean, it, look, there is no right or right, wrong way to do it. There, there's very different approaches as well. Hopefully we're trying to explain yeah. right here so that you can pick which one you think works for you and obviously run with it if, you, if you're unsure um, or try them, you know. Um, um, but yeah, I, I just, for me, I'm just like, I, I just want to be like, I know it's done. I haven't mm. got to worry about it now, if that makes sense. Like, I, 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 I think attach, I think I've always hated is the models levitating. Like you said, I think that, that drives me nuts. Cause it's like, well, I know they're on top, but they shouldn't look like they've not disturbed in the surface. Mm. And then when you, when you sand or material around the foot, it kind of gives that a Marine in power armor is like a ton. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like it, 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 it would be like in the ground a little yeah. bit, you know, like, yeah. and, and, um, and you know it's from real life. Like if you walk on gravel, your feet sink into it. Well, exactly. It. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, don't and, go along the top and, of it. And, <laughs> I, and I definitely don't weigh a ton. So, uh, so, uh, so. Um, but, but the the thing is, is like I just, yeah. The, whichever process you have of doing it, I think one of the things that, that I always used to find frustrating when when bases were done separate is that is that the models aren't 
really, really strongly attached to the base. And like all it takes is dropping a model on the floor mm. and that base shears off. That can be true, right? but yeah. that does I found that that does depend on A, the model itself, B, the glue you're using, yeah, and yeah. C, if you do, like you say, you know you key the bases to make the material stick, you can do that with the feet. Yeah. Mm. And it, if it's if you're using a fine basing material, which I like to do, just yeah. to sort of give it more sense of scale, if it's a very, very coarse material, like, you know, aquarium sand or like gravel, <laughs> then yeah, that, that makes sense how easy to break off. <laughs> but also, colors. I do find that even if a model does require pinning, pinning takes like a couple of minutes. Yeah. And overall... Yeah. All these little things add up. I'm talking like big army projects you, here. You sure it takes a uh, uh, takes a <laughs> yeah. Not going to well, talk I, about not going to talk about the Amazon pin vice, are we? So, uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> if you're using a drill, yeah. yeah no, well, if the, if the Dewalt sniper was let loose <laughs> on, uh, on my bases, that'd be very uh, yeah, quick. Yeah. Bet, no, with, with my uh, Azrak, I've I've kind of it's sort of. Well, I mean, he's on the base. He's he's on there now. He's on sort of a couple of layers of cork bark. Yeah, yeah. And I've p I've pinned it. And he's all undercoated, ready to go now. And the base is undercoated, ready to go. But I, I, I always find it difficult because I, I think, well, I painted the model. What am I going to, what do I put on the, what am I going to do with the base creatively? What am I going to do with the base? Am I just going to, is it just going to be a dry brush over some sand and a, and a, and a skull or a rock or something? Or is it going to be something more elaborate? So, I mean, I, I suppose for Azraq, I want to keep it quite plain because obviously he's the focus of the piece. He's got so much detail on him as well. And, you know, if you, if you try and keep it as close to the artwork as possible, he is standing on just a generally flat Bit of gantry, piece. isn't it? Yeah. Like, it's, yeah is it rock like a, or is it like... I don't know. Like, it looks... It, it's either... I remember like the old a plastic artwork. or something like that or some sort of metal concrete sheet or, or some concrete or something, yeah, with some... Uh, it's fairly flat. It. Yeah, it it's fairly so it's dead flat. flat kind of thing. Is there a chain on the wall in the background or is that me going mad? No, it's, no it, do you know? Just, no, that's, no, that's, no, that's, that's Taro's. That's Taro's. Yeah. 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 I don't know why. Yeah, he's done such a good job and it makes me think it's the artwork. <laughs> we frequently hear from you with questions asking how you can paint like our team of world-class and award-winning artists. Teaching is something that all of the team here at Siege are very passionate about and we want to share with you the methods and techniques that we use to paint every single day all of the incredible miniatures and armies that you have seen from us. With the Seed Studios Patreon, you'll gain access to a growing catalogue of over 300 step-by-step -step tutorials covering a huge variety of colour schemes, miniatures, painting styles and techniques, from beginner-focused foundation tutorials to full character masterclasses. Each lesson comes in a beautifully designed and easy-to-follow PDF format with accompanying artist commentary with new tutorials added every single week. Your subscription also includes access to our private patron channels on Discord so that you can interact directly with our artists asking for questions or feedback. You'll also be supporting the podcast directly, helping us to bring you these episodes every single week. So if you want to take your painting to the next level and make the most of your very valuable hobby time, head over to patreon.com forward slash siege studios. Um, so at the moment, he's just on this. It, uh, the groundwork has been textured. I think I used some of the uh, Citadel textured paints yeah, like for, 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 for terrain and things. They're, they're really cool. They're, they really make a difference. Um, so I did that and, and then it's just been given a, a nice matte black undercoat. Mm. But other than that, I haven't done anything else to the base. But I think and I just don't, I think, well, do I, where I've got the rocks cracking and he sort of stood over the top of them, do I need a little pipe underneath in the bottom there with something oozing out that's giving the glow or do I just well let's let's talk about that know. then so what, what are some easy ways that people can make a base look more interesting then but without going over the top I think I don't, you've got various different things you can do um, like you've not only got environment you've also got situation and I think that's yeah. something that often doesn't get overlooked like yeah you might want your base on a snow world or you might want it on a lava world or yeah, like changing the environment is obviously something you can quite easily do mm. to add interest like you can there are different types of environments that have more more of an interest or lesser of an interest. You know, if it's just in the middle of a desert, it's, it's probably pretty well, let's, boring. Well, let's but... talk more specifically than that, though. Say you've got like an established basing theme. What are some like embellishments or extra steps that people can do to make mm. it stand out more? You mentioned one, which is the obvious, which is very fitting. Skulls. Okay, chucking skulls on or stuff like that, which is, <laughs> we'll just get that right out there straight away. Um, however, I, I think things like, um, as, as a classic example, like it, like if there's a grudge between the faction and uh, another faction, that mm. you, you know, so when I'd done my own warriors army, there was tons of Imperial fist stuff scattered all over the bases. So you had like, you know, uh, shoulder pads, helmets. Um, one of my defilers was quite infamous because I went to the heresy weekend. I bought one, bought Primark Rogal Dawn when he came out and I mounted it as a fallen statue on the base. So, <laughs> so, um, 
so you can do different it's expensive levels. base <laughs> yeah <laughs> the grudge was worth it um, yeah. dawn because i'm worth it um so so yeah but the the thing is is like um i think that adding that layer of of ip or like narrative onto it as well as the environment is also a good mm. way of doing it you can also do things like the kelamorph I, I mentioned about like I've done on the base of that, I've done like a, like a, a bit of like a thrown scanner, just like a, almost like a, a, a sort of scanner thing on the floor uh, underneath him. And the idea is to then use that to create a bit of a lighting effect yeah. in the screen on the, the, just towards the low end of the foot. So you can add little things on that like bits of technology, a weapon or like a lamp or some lights. You I'm can cool. go really specific as well. This, I'm sorry to interject. No, no, go, go. I, I, it's the Space Marines again, unfortunately, but I'm on the Space Marines uh, path at the minute. When you get Space Marine kits, they often have, especially with the Intercessors, they have all the different uh, magazine options Yeah, uh, for the, ah, for the weapons. Idea, yeah. What you can do is you can cut the sort of top part of the bolter off and you can just make a little magazine. Mm -hmm. You can you can end up with a stash of like 10 or 15 of those. Yeah. And uh, you could have, you could scatter those about. Uh, or, yeah. it's, I often see like dis dis discarded weapons, yeah. not, are, but you never see like, well, you think about it, how often are you discarding a, a whole weapon for the magazines? You think yeah, yeah. the magazines or, just or get even dropped. Going back to what we were saying, like, you know, you know that on your paper clips, the sheath that's around the paper, the rubber sheath that's done that, I think when you cut that off, I think one of the hobby hacks that we had in one of the episodes is you, when you take that off, off of a paper clip, when you pull it off. Oh, you're talking about the paper clips that are colored yeah, so and it's colored, like sort of the wrapped they've around. Got the, they've got the mm. plastic, like plastic wrap that's around the actual wire of the, the thing. Cases. Take that off and you can make extended shell casings, mm. you know, or if they've got shotguns, you can make them like a shotgun. Like you can do quite cool yeah. things like that. I, I am super grateful to uh, Games Workshop because a lot of their characters now, they all come, I know we laugh about tactical rocks and things, but a lot of the bases now are quite well sort of modeled and so I say decorated for you. Yeah. So you get, you know, you, a lot of your characters are standing on like a tyrannid head or or some, not just a, like a rock, but a piece of outcropping or- Particularly some it, of the really new stuff that's come out in like the yeah. last year, they've started going beyond the tactical rock and so they've started the, doing- So that takes- More interesting stuff. A bit of that, what do I put on this base pressure away because it's it's sculpted there for yeah, you. Yeah, no, I mean, I mean, one of my favourites that's come out recently is Lord Solar, the the, the Robo Horse. Yeah. He's standing like on a Reaver Titan skull, like yeah. a head, you know. like it, the, the, There's lots of really cool things that do come inherently with a model, but I think what you can do is then you can add narrative onto that. So take the Lord Solar as an example, as, as, as a model. That's on the base. It's, he's standing on on a Reaver, Reaver Titan head. Imagine if you've got other sort of like mechanical aspects and then around the head, yeah. scattered more mechanical stuff around the head. Mm. So it looks like obviously the Titan's yeah. fallen and maybe all the gears and servos and bits have fallen out and like all around him and stuff like that. Like you can watch parts. We talk about that all the time as well. Like you can, I it was another, I think that was Joe's hobby hack, the one that he chucked in as well was like, That's good, you know, yeah. you can, you can stick those on. So if you're in an industrial world, you can stick stuff yeah. like that on the base. Little and, cogs and, and things little like cogs that. and things. They're great for mechanic and bases, you know, so. Yeah. With me old, uh, get the mushrooms on the base. I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true though. That's I mean, that's something that's quite low uh, time investment yeah. and can yeah. add to quite a lot and to a model, especially if you do it like, I think um, you kind of got to know which way you're going to commit with this because if you do something, if you do like a couple of mushrooms, that can be cool. Mm -hmm. but it can kind of look like just a couple of mushrooms stuck in a base. Yeah. If you make it quite thematic and you go all out, like, you know, quite a dense amount of the mushrooms and you're like doing maybe some glow effects or some pigment powders and you're mm -hmm. kind of making it a part of the environment. And you go a lot further. I think that can be really, really effective. Uh, there's, there's, there's some marine life called polyps. Mm -hmm. You sort of know what polyps look like, but they're, they're relatively easy. They're kind of sort of round, sort of blobs and things with little holes. holes and yeah, things. yeah. And but actually, uh, they're really easy to sculpt. Are they things like a stuck on whales on the underneath the whales? No, yeah, they're like barnacles. That? Oh, sorry, I'm getting confused <laughs> between yeah. barnacles. Um, I suppose you could do barnacles on land, but yeah, polyps. Um, so. We, I mean, I was sort of sculpting these things and sticking them all over rocks and things. I actually did a bit of a, a sculpture, I suppose, um, if you want to call it that. Um, I, I had a, a glass, quite a large glass jar. Hmm. Was it a bomb my mom jar by any chance? <laughs> no. Oh, shame. It's it yeah. an old coffee jar that was just going to get tossed out. So I, I, had, I had this idea. So over, over this jar, I've sculpted all these kind of polyps and like this weird, colourful growth. Mm -hmm. So it's been discarded and, you know, it's something sort of trying to claim it back, I suppose. But uh, it looks quite cool. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but sculpting these things on a base is, it, I mean, it's other things that are really easy to do. So just, you know, I, I tend to just put a blob of grey stuff on a base and just think, right, 
what should I squash that into or what can I try and make that into? And I just, you know, get a couple of little tools out and I'm poking it and prodding it and, you know, sh shoving bits of plastic into it and things like that. And it, nine times out of 10, it doesn't look too bad. Good, it looks good. all right. But uh, yeah, especially for polyps and things, because they're, it's, they're an organic thing. Mm -hmm. I know in the, they don't need to need to look uniform, so they don't need. To I look don't know, and, and if if you can sculpt, uh, you know, if you can get a nice little group of these things together, they actually look really good. Yeah, they look really nice and effective, and they don't look particularly out of place on land because you don't know. I mean, most people can say, "Oh, you've sculpted polyps on a rock. <laughs> are you are you crazy?" <laughs> it's like, mm, no, it, well, they're space polyps, so actually, or they don't live anywhere. <laughs> um, so it's just about sculpting or. or I quite like doing that sort of stuff. You yeah, know, yeah. it's um, not necessarily it's like, oh, that's super alien looking. Well, it's just polyps. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think. But it's, I think one of the things that I always try and try and think about when it comes to sort of doing either natural or even doing like more sort of like stuff that's been forgotten or stuff like that. Mm. I think it always ties back to the to thinking about the environment. I know it sounds really silly, and you're not. You've got to kind of think as if you were. It's like that scene in Friends where Joey gets in the map. It's like you've got to. You've got to get into the environment yeah, to kind of like there. work out like what your what your models are actually facing or what kind of environment they're mm -hmm. in or things like that you know um i i always think that's important because it because again yeah you can just put sand on the base and dry brush it and maybe you stick a tuft on whatever that, there's nothing wrong with that <laughs> at all like there really isn't if you're getting a gaming army done really quickly but i think if you're really looking to i hear it all the time on classes i really want my basin my basin to be better i want my basin to be better and i think one of the things to, to actually think about is as i said is the environment that, that miniature or that faction or that army or that uh, are actually within and then it, it's i find basin just as fun as painting the miniature like when i done that corn berserker on the army painter video that we that we um that we uh painted or when we done that the trial of the paints i think i said it and, it, and same with it same with the the the, the crude shaper that uh the first shaper I actually enjoyed, I done on both of those character models, I done the bases first, mm. which is really different for me, but I'd done the bases because I wanted to create a scene or environment that that model was in. Does that make sense? Yeah. No, I, I get that. Yeah. Yeah. Let's speak about that a little bit then. So, because as you mentioned, they're characters. So, we've done the sort of embellishing uh, a regular base. What for something like uh, a competition piece or something a bit higher end? What are your sort of go-tos for inspiration, like materials you like to use? How did, let's talk about specifically that one that you've done for the Army Paint uh, uh, episode. Yeah. How did you go about, what was the idea behind that? What materials did you use? What was the process? So first thing, uh, first thing first was, was I chose a color scheme. So the Ignited Warband, which are golden corn, a golden armored corn berserker warband, which is a bit odd. They're very, very blingy. Um, and obviously the gold's yellow. So I was like, I want like a blue or turquoisey blue base because then mm. it was based on color theory and on primary color sort of relationships I, I think that would look quite good and i knew i was gonna use a bit of red so that would be like the triad of colors um but then for the base i was like right well first thing i did was i just i got the normal 32 mil i sanded it flat because i was like i could put plastic guard on top but sometimes when you put plastic on unless you cut it absolutely perfectly and then sand mm. around the edge you can see that gap or the lines yeah the GW bases have a little bit of texture on them don't they do, they? yeah they yes. do it's like a little bit of texture and whether that's to help with the model adhere to the base when you put glue on or whether it's just to add something on there in case you don't do basic material mm. i don't know but but i sand that smooth um found a couple of bits of like mechanical stuff so there was like a little control box thing with some buttons on it and then um and then i can't remember what else. So the, the, the corn berserker had like some had a tactical rock or mound or something yeah. under its foot so then i stuck that on stuck that on stuck the little control box thing on got some wire dr i got the, I drilled into the control box and put bent a wire because i was like oh, i want some piping on the floor like, mm. this, like, like, like metal wire like, or? Uh, like a like a well just like a wire an basically. actual cable, yeah, actual like, cable yeah. Yeah. yeah so because I, I was thinking ahead i was like well the base is the base is blue so so i want the pipe to have chevrons like yellow and black chevrons so you've got the blue and yellow on the base mm. as well and then like i was like right well i've got blue on the base i've got the yellow chevrons on the cable I, i'm going to put a red stripe on like, the deck of the ship or whatever is running across so then you've got the three the primary color triad on on the base um uh and that's kind of how that base came about and i, and I had so much fun like making it because it was just it was just the setting for the for the model if that makes yeah. sense like you know and I, and I always say it's like a, a, a base a good base is like a frame of a like you go to the museums and you see like these crazy sculpted frames around pictures and stuff like that like the frame is almost as much of an interest or eye captivating thing as the actual artwork that's within mm. it it's not like obviously these have got like a black frame because they're quite colorful artworks or whatever but but like 
it's not like that. And that's kind of what I see the bass. Like when you, it, it should be just as much to complement the miniature. Um, my, my favorite one that I've done, one of my favorite bases is, um, is, uh, well, there's the crew one. And then obviously the, the, my, my, my Dante that I've done for, for GD and for, uh, for competitions, like that Dante's classic model comes with a massive fallen pillar as part of the model. Mm. So you're kind of predetermined in the kind of environment that he kind of needs to be in. Like, so again, I tiled around that that pillar, I cut the pillar a little bit because there was too much of that. So I just retained what needed, then tiled around it, added sand, added some bits and bobs on there and stuff, and then and started making it like he's landing in some kind of courtyard or something. Mm. You know? So like I think you can't in some cases with character models that do come with these like extra details that we that George mentioned, like you kind of are a little bit guided in the environment that you need to kind of yeah. put that person within or that character within. You can always to... remove that yeah, stuff course, though. Like even can. Yeah, yeah, even yeah, if yeah. it is um, sculpted onto the model, you can yeah. start to cut Oh yeah. yeah, we've all been yeah. at scenery like that with uh, clippers and things. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> we, yeah, yeah. We've all done it. So. Yeah, but I, I think I think that's the, a good place to start with like those more detailed models is like think, really put yourself in like, you know, what, what story am I trying to tell? What environment is this character within? Really put yourself in their shoes because I think it's that level of creativity that you that everyone's capable of, of putting themselves in that situation and going, right, okay, well, mm. that, you know, and, and it will just help you to make some really cool choices with regards to sort of like what you want to do. Think of grudges. If you're doing Iron Warriors, put some Iron put, put Fists on the base, or if you're doing Space Wars, maybe have like a Dark Angel helmet yeah. or something like that because they've got that. You know, there's, like, there's some really cool things that you can pick up from lore and also from just just the miniature rangers to do it or or like the Kellermorph, like I mentioned, just get a random bit of gear yeah. or equipment. because Whatever think, armor your friend's got. Yeah, that's always a good one. Yeah, yeah you can add, throw a little bit of salt in the wounds, <laughs> you know. Uh, you know, uh, we get asked that all the time. Can you put like this on the base because I play this guy? Yeah. Um, that works really well. Um, but then on top of all of that, situational stuff. So like, as I said, like if you want to do uh, uh, like a lighting effect, you could put mm. something on the base that is the source of the lighting effect. You yeah. know? So there's things that you can actually do and make decisions you can make in the basing stage that are there because they're not only making the basing cool, but they're also heavily involved with the way that you're actually going to paint that miniature as well. So there, there's lots, there's, basing for me is actually, as much as I love painting miniatures and love bringing them to life and adding all the color and detail and all that kind of stuff, the environment that tells a story is actually the real thing that I enjoy massively because mm. it's, because it's such an important part of the miniature. If you're doing something maybe not for gaming potentially, yeah. But I think even adding a nuance of that for gaming armies just but people look at your army and go, oh wow, you've you collect iron warriors and look, there's loads of real fist stuff all over the base. You yeah. know, like it's yeah. like it's just a nice little thing. It's a talking point when you're at the table like with with your yeah. opponent, you know. Um, and if you play an Imperial Fist player and you play an Iron Warriors, you can chuck a little bit of extra salt in the wind, you know? So. As, a, as a final sort of closing note then, I'm curious, you mentioned the uh, the watch parts, which we spoke about previously. Yeah. Are there any sort of wild card basing materials that you have that uh, may be a go-to? Well, I've, I don't know if I've mentioned it before, but I've recently discovered this. It's called cork bark. <laughs> uh, and I'll tell you what, just if you've got a coaster at home, just just use that. It's made a cool. It's brilliant. Wild card. I think I think the watch parts was a, was was like a, a real a real kind of cool, cool mm, thing. Yeah. Um, I actually really like. There's a whole range of like of uh, plastic car that comes with like different types of texture and stuff put on it. Like mm. especially from railway modeling as well, you get a lot of like eye bar and you get a lot of different like yeah uh, like diamond plate, like diamond plate, plate all yeah. that kind of yeah. stuff like. Like you can do some really cool things with that. Like, it, and it's 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 a. I mean, lots of people know this anyway, but I'll say it. But like, if you if you frequent a Costa or a Starbucks quite mm. regularly, the stirrers in there make amazing planks, planks. for like for de the ship of a deck. Yeah, uh, the ship of the deck, the deck of a ship, <laughs> uh, or or like uh, uh, trench, wood, trench, really. trench yeah. boards in in on for trench basin mm. or like yeah. those kind of. Things. There is. So like you can get like mesh and just get like sheets of mesh and you can stick the bases to that and then cut the bases yeah. out. I tell you, you know, what makes a, a, but, can make such a massive difference. If you're not really, you know, got much time to spend on these sorts of things is, you know, the, the rollers, yeah. the textured rollers and things. Yeah. I've yeah. got a couple of those now. I've got, you know, a chaos sort of theme one and more of a, just a general type one. Um, and they're great. Just put a really thin sort of layer of green, green stuff, stuff on your base. Yeah. Just roll it along the top. Perfect. Um, one of the things you can do as well, even if you don't have one of those rollers, is uh, kind of like do your own. I know the cobblestone ones are really mm. popular. I was doing some like flagstone basing for my night relic that I'm doing, uh, which is going to be part of like an upcoming competition piece. Um, but I actually like made my own by 
flattening uh, some, mil- I used Miller part, not green stuff, because it's a bit easier to sand. Uh, and then I literally got a, a, a small uh, block planer, like a wood planer. Yeah. Made it really, really, really flat and quite thin as well, because there's a bit of pet peeve of mine is when stuff isn't quite to scale, it's too thick. Uh, and then just gouged that out with a mm. file. And that made some really, really nice like uh, cobblestone sort of textures. It was more like uh, manufactured stone, not that like cobbled stone fine bricks. Yeah. I wouldn't really want to do it for that. But for like big stone slabs, like block paving, um, that could be really cool. But you can like, you can make your own. I've seen people get like a foil for like, mm. I think you see, there's a lot of videos on like how to make dungeon tiles and things. But a lot yeah. of that stuff is quite applicable if you think of it in a sense of scale and how you can make it more miniaturized. Mm. You can you can make your own sort of mini rollers really easily. If you get like a little sausage of green stuff, Oh, and just uh, attach it to a chopstick so you've got like a little handle on it. If you texture the green stuff and just let it dry, mm. you can then just use that to roll over yep. any other surface yeah. you've got and it'll leave a little pattern in there. That's, I've got a few of those. <laughs> I, I, I saw it on a, a YouTube video. I thought, what a great idea. There was a guy who's sculpting, uh, makes all these crazy models and he, he, he makes them out of, just makes these little mini rollers out of clay and just mm. uses it to texture skin, just rolls it over his, his clay sculpture yeah but it, 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 it works the same way well, one of my favorite things i think i've done is um because a lot of the tiles and things like that when you're trying to do like tiled or mosaic floors or like you know big slabs and things like that a lot of it is either plastic card or you get like plastic card that's got texture of those sheets and things like that one of my favorite things that i've done i think it's in, in the direct it's not so much the material that was strange it's the way that i got the material so Plaster Paris is obviously liquid form when you when you mix it. Okay, um, what you can get is you can get the rubberized uh, silicon chocolate molds. Okay, they're really thin. oh we said about they're, this before. Yeah, yeah, they're really thin, so they're like they're probably about this big. But each of the squares, yeah, you can get. They're not just they're decent, so probably like an inch by inch, or maybe like a little bit smaller than that. But it's actually the silicon mold is very thin, so the depth of the of the square of chocolate is quite thin. I suppose it's down to the depth of the pour you do as well, because even if it's quite a deep mold, Correct. if you're doing quite yeah. a thin pour. Correct. Yeah. So yeah. you can also also determine how thick the tiles are by how much plaster parish you pour in. Um, put that, leave that, let that dry, put it in the freezer, put it wherever. And what will happen is obviously you'll then create these amazing tiles. Like little flagstone. When you pop them out, they're perfect. I suppose you can crack them as well. Yeah. yeah. Quite you, easily. Can, you can break them so they look like they're shattered. So I, I had some assault marines in one of my old armies whereby where they land in around you can, you can oh like a superhero oh. landing <laughs> so you can that's make why it, you're the boss you can, make isn't it, it? you can make it look you can make it look like so if you do if you base it correctly you can crack the tile in the center so it has all the pieces cracked to the middle genius you can place the foot of the assault marine yeah. in the in the shallow as it looks like as he's landing he's cracking the this tiles. is pretty next level yeah, this, is, yeah. this is good yeah. um but the other good thing with those plaster paris uh sort of uh chocolate mold tiles is that what you can do is you can then get them out perfectly stick them down cut them with clippers because they mm. do cut quite nicely with clippers um and then you can start putting scratches into them you can put details you can you know um i i've seen someone use it before and they had an orc on the base like an orc war boss um, and they scratched into it like I I I was here like that. So it, <laughs> so as if he's like scratched with his power claw in the floor, yeah, yeah. like you know, it's got it's like really cool stuff like that. You've told like, me about the chocolate idea, mold huh? thing before, and I thought it was really really stupid, but you didn't explain it like you just have, and now you've completely changed my it's mind. Amazing. Really, it's really amazing. It's amazing. But plaster Paris liquid and it sets, and then you can literally just crack those tiles, and it's phenomenal for just making like even if you're doing big dioramas, if you're doing like gaming boards, mm. like they they they're really they, it's literally how. And it's quite cheap to, to yeah, produce is, yeah. quite lots of things. Those silicon valuable. molds on Amazon or on like eBay, yeah, they're really cheap. Quite and a like, lot of for... But you just want to find one that are quite shallow so that, that even if you fit it fully, yeah. it's, you're just going to get a tile that you can actually break. You know, And also for scale purposes as well, like if you think 32mm yeah. base, et cetera, you want them to be. So yeah, they work really well. Yeah, but chocolate molds are great. What so nice idea. Instantly, my mind goes to, there's a, a Stormcast miniature who's literally in that kind of pose where... I don't know what the net, I can't remember. I'll find name. it. I'll put it on screen. Yeah. And all of his kind of cloak is sort of flying up above him where he's landed. Sort you of combined thing. him with those tiles. Yeah. So it it like, like, yeah just... the, the fist through the the fist through the paving stones done yeah. it for me. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, but I, I, I again like I've seen I've seen those tiles used for other things as well. So like um the, the, there was an entry in in, uh, in Demon. I don't think it placed, but there was an entry in Demon where someone like two models are fighting. 
Mm. And in Matrix style, where like the agent punches the wall and the wall kind of like explodes as he's yeah. punching it, there was like an, I think there's an Ogrim fighting something and the Ogrim misses what he's punching, he's punching the wall and the wall is exploding where he's punching cool. So there's yeah. loads of cool stuff you can do with it. Um, it's just limitless, so isn't it? It's hobby. It's mega. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely idea. mega. Yeah. So, but yeah, you should have, like, ultimately, like, to close it off, like are you, you, basing should be just as fun, in my opinion, as like mm. painting the model. It's, it's, the same way that I personally think, in my opinion, that adding narrative from the game into the into the painting or into the modeling is important. I think without a good base, sometimes the models look a little bit soulless because they don't have they have like this amazingly painted model and then it just hasn't got a base that's telling the story of the sort of frame. Are, it, you know what it, I mean? Yeah. So, so yeah. As artists, we know how time consuming painting miniatures is, especially if you want to achieve a high standard for tabletop or display. Life is busy, and we don't all have eight hours a day to paint. Plus, if you're still early in your painting journey, it may feel that you're a long way off ever owning your own beautiful army for your games. For 10 years, Siege Studios has been delivering bespoke miniature painting commissions to collectors and gamers all over the world. We have a world-class team of artists from Golden Demon winners to ex-studio painters, collating hundreds of years of collective experience. Here at Siege, we offer a series of painting levels and services to meet your needs and budget, whether you want a favorite character for your display or a stunning gaming army. We pride ourselves on offering well above the industry standard of quality and our customer experience. To see our gallery, learn more about our services and get a quote now, head over to siegestudios.co.uk or head to the link in this episode's description. Okay, it's question of the week time. Thank you everyone for submitting your questions for question of the week. If you have a question that you would like us to answer on a future episode of the podcast, please leave it in the comments down below on YouTube. Uh, this question comes from Daniel Bird who says... One question I have for you as commission painters, do you ever feel like you don't want to part with the minis you've painted for clients? I've occasionally done commissions for friends and I absolutely hate the part where I have to give it back. And every time I've sold my own minis, I always end up regretting it down the track. Yeah, 100 million percent. Even in the early days of when it was me in the flat above the chemist when I started Siege, there were projects that I was like, I just don't want to give this back. And I still, and George will testify. There's stuff, uh, there's stuff that comes into the building. And you'll <laughs> mm. both say, like, there's stuff that comes in and it's just like, it's like, I just don't want that to go. <laughs> I don't want you them know, to have I it. I don't want it to have it. It should like, be mine. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. Uh, that's, that is the biggest problem with it. Um, I think, the, I think in regards to selling armies and stuff, I've, I've felt that countless times where you've done a project and you, for yourself, you painted an army. My Iron Warriors being one of them, even though they, they have a bit of a lucid story, but we won't go into that. But, um, I regret selling. It. It's, mm. What it is, I think, is because you're spending that time that you don't get back. Yeah. You have a personal connection you to it. You have a personal spend, connection You spent a week together. Yeah. And, <laughs> okay. and it's hard to, to, it's hard to let that go. I don't think, mm. I don't think, yeah, like, I don't think it's easy to let that go. But yeah, you're quite right. Like there's, there's stuff that you're like, oh, I just don't, I don't want this to go. I think for me personally, because the painting is what I enjoy, it's not having the thing. It's the process of doing yeah. it. I'm not particularly attached to stuff once it's done, which is weirdly actually how I ended up commission painting in the first place was I was just selling models that I'd painted because once I'd painted them, I was kind of, because I didn't game, so I was kind of just done with them. Mm. They just sat in the cabinet and I was like, well, I might as well just sell these then. And then that, you know, snowboarded into eventually doing commissions. Um, but I will say the first time I've ever really had an attachment to a project is with my Blood Angels that I've started this year. And that's because it's the first time I've consciously said to myself, okay, I'm going to start an army and it's a project that I'm quite passionate about to begin with. And I've told myself from the start, like, you're not allowed to sell these. That's something mm. I've said to myself in my head. And I've never done that before because a lot of projects that I've done, even display pieces, competition pieces, even ones that I haven't necessarily sold, I would be happy to part with because it was just the experience that I was doing it for, if that makes sense. Do you know where I, I also agree with you on that? It, it, it's, it's sometimes, it's not even so much that you like the model. It's actually that you've got better or that you've, yeah, exactly. you've got better on that piece. And it's mm. like, that's if I know I can paint better than it now, nah, no, I'm not bothered no, about it's, it. It's, but I think I, I, one of the examples for me is like one of my old GD squads. I learned so much on doing it and it's such a emotive piece because it's the thing that I love and it's the, and I learned so much in doing it. I've done things that I'd never done before on it. I could never part with it. Mm. I could never, for no money, no nothing. I just physically couldn't. But in the same respect, like when you do something and you look at it five, six, seven years down the line and you know that your skill has moved on such a, such an amount from that point, I suppose, maybe that does become a bit easier. I think it varies from piece you're to probably, piece. You're probably, even if you want to sell it or not, I presume you're way less attached to that piece now than you was the day 
Oh yeah, if, like, yeah. Do you know of what course. I mean? Yeah, no, yeah. definitely. I think that does wane a little bit over time. But for uh, example, with my Black Templars, um, they didn't place or anything in GD, but I, it was like the biggest project I'd ever done, and I spent hours and hours and hours, and I was so proud of them at the time, and I still am. I'm still very, very grateful to have got a finance pin for them. But looking at them now, w- one, it helps that I know I can paint better than that now. Mm. But two, it's, it's kind of just been and done. Like I'm, I'm ready to move on to the yeah. next thing. Like they're sat in my cabinet and I'm not looking to get rid of them, but I don't think I'd miss them. No, yeah, no, I get that. I, 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 I agree with you. Like my, like my warrior army wasn't painted the best. It was painted in a very quick time frame to get it done for SN and for all the tournaments and stuff and, and gaming. But there's something about having... I think nodding back to Peach's episode, like it, 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 it's the spectacle of having that a complete that army, complete painting, army, yeah. you know. And I've learned the hard no way. Yeah, I've, I've sold sold armies before, like you know, personal armies and stuff like that. And I'm just mm. like, I really regret that. Like, yeah. I think what helps with commissions though, and why it's a bit different, is you go into it knowing it's not yours, yeah. and you yeah. know you're doing it for someone else. And yeah. You kind of get a sense of pride in and excitement in. Yeah. they're gonna love this, and I that's mean, why it's so. That's why for me, it's so easy to hand them mm. over. Is because I'm excited to present you, it. it. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 it's always great to see the reaction of the person that's 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 willed this thing into reality. Mm. You know what I mean? And and but yeah, there are. I'm not gonna lie. There are some that are just <laughs> yeah. like I'm just like I just. I, I mean, I've never done it. any commissions. I mean, I've, I've sold some things on eBay before, but it, I suppose that's that's a bit different because I think well, I'm going to paint this and purposefully for putting it on eBay. Mm. You know, pro painter. <laughs> um, and selling it on eBay, so yeah. it's that's, I suppose that's a bit different because you're. It's easy to be a, detached from it mm. because you know that you're not. It's not going to go in the cabinet at the end of it. You know you're gonna just gonna. It's gonna go to someone else. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully, eventually. Mm. Yeah. Um, no. So it's a bit different, but I, like you say, there's there's things where you just think oh, I'm never going to get rid of that. Yeah. That's great. You know, it's it's part of your progression journey yeah. or whatever you want to I, call I, it or... I think that's why it's important to keep some of your first models as well because like yeah I, I definitely they, have some of my yeah. old models for the sake of well I, I can't recreate it with something else and I could always paint another one mm. but like I can't repaint the first model I ever painted yeah. so I understand keeping that around yeah, but yeah. I do I do see that as a different yeah. thing yeah. No, it yeah. is, is it's very much a different thing but what I meant is that like it, the, the principle of keeping it is, is kind of similar in the sense it's the first thing you painted or it's the thing that you've painted the best you've ever done do you know what I mean mm, like, yeah. like you, you, you go it's the moment where something clicks on that piece and you're like I can do that now yeah. you know like and, and, and keeping that this was the moment when that happened for me I think is quite important so yeah. Yeah. so I don't know but. I agree well, I, I, I mean for the eBay thing I painted several chaplains for eBay a couple that were on bikes and just a couple that were just you know on foot and after the the full farm, which was uh, a chaplain on a bike, I almost couldn't part with it mm. um, because I mean I, it was partly the progression of painting black armor. I mm. painted them purposely just to have a practice of painting black armor. Really. Yeah, I was yeah. never going to keep them anyway, so always going to go on eBay. But by the by the last one, I thought, oh, I don't really want to part with that one. But I did force myself, but I, I kind of do. Re- Great There's tip. a little bit of regret there because I think, well, that's that would have been quite nice to have kept that one, but I suppose you know at the time circumstances are different, and I was painting it specifically to, to you know for a purpose to sell it and for whatever you know for whatever reasons you had, but um, but yeah, some I I understand where where it's coming from. It, it can be difficult sometimes, so to, to especially if it's one of your friends, it's like. I don't want to give you this now. I I, I, th- I think one of the thing with friends though is that you you do still get to see it though. That's the thing. It's I suppose like so. It's, yeah. It's, it's 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 there, but it's it's not. Does that make yeah. sense? So like yeah, yeah. I suppose we, yeah. It's, it's, I suppose it's like well, I still get to see you occasionally, <laughs> <laughs> weekends or whatever. Yeah, so, yeah. it's fine. Yeah. It's you fine. have to arrange some kind of like, like can you have it on weekends? I'll have yeah. it during the week. Yeah, <laughs> you know. So yeah, yeah, but no. Okay, if you've made it so far into this episode, congratulations. This is your reward. This is our segment that we call Hobby Hacks. This is where we share a little quick tip with you or a hobby hack that you can implement into your painting if you are listening uh, while you're working on your hobby. And I think we have a topical one this week from James. So I'm going to channel my inner Alan Titchmarsh, okay, for this specific basing hack. All right, okay. I I, I do see basing as miniature gardening. That's what I do see it Sure, go for it. So um, I think, yes, you can just put a bog standard sand 
on your on your bases. I think that's you know quite quite perfectly fine to do that. However, there's so much more fun that can be had by actually making your own mix. And what I mean by that is by add, getting a large Tupperware TK Max, um, and then literally uh, not a sponsor, yeah, not a sponsored, <laughs> um, and then and then essentially um, essentially putting in loads of different grit sands. You can put brick, like broken bricks, in there if you've used the rubber, the rubber or uh, the um, the the chocolate molds, and you make those tiles. You can put some of those in. You can chuck some of so the skulls that Paul was mentioning. In. You can chuck bits of like extra kind of like equipment or like scanners or like uh just bits of like mm. watch parts you can make a really cool basin mix that what that means is that whenever you do your draw through it with the base with with glue on it you get a lovely random draw of parts and bits and things that just make it makes that it, it almost helps with the creativity of the base does that make sense yeah because a lot of people do struggle with like with creating that narrative and i understand mm. it is hard sometimes and i think one of the good things of making that unique mix is that yes you choose all the options and things that go in there but because it all mixes around the stuff when you do that draw with the model it does the work for you does that make sense every base is a surprise yeah exactly yeah <laughs> it's it you can it literally a lucky dip so well, so yeah yeah well, lovely that was that that's basically my tip and you can and like you can make different tupperwares for different environments so you can have an urban one or you can have one that's a bit more this way or that way like an industrial mm. one you can make all these different things that and you label them and i've got a few different ones that label for different environments and that's a really good way of and the other thing is also the consistency when you're doing a large army project mm. like you might sometimes it's hard to make the bases look consistent if you're doing it in, in other ways whereas if your initial material that goes on is that benchmark of consistency anything else that you put on is then going to add even more richness of narrative and environment to it as well. So, so yeah, so make your own custom mix sand. I think that's probably one of the, or not sand, but like, yeah, basic yeah. material, but yeah. that's, that's kind of what I'd recommend. Nice. Brilliant. Okay. Well, thank you everyone for listening to this week's episode of Paint Perspective. If you'd like to support the show, you will have heard a number of ads through this episode. Don't forget you can pick up your Siege merch, t-shirts, jumpers, all that good stuff. And if you do like listening to these podcasts and you'd like to consider supporting us on Patreon, you'll gain access to a whole bunch of tutorials PDFs as well. Uh, and we look forward to seeing you on the next episode next week. 